So you must be familiar with the fillet tool that we just usually use fillet, which is right here to add rounded corner. So go to fillet, select radius and add a radius value. For example, maybe I'll type 0.2 as the radius, press enter. I'll select the first edge, second edge, and we have the fillet. Now that's the usual use case, but do you know that using fillet, you can do this as well. You can go to fillet and irrespective of whatever radius you select here, you can select the first edge, second edge, and you'll get a semicircular arc when your two lines are parallel. You can do the same for the second side. And you can also merge two lines at a sharp corner. So go to fillet, go to radius, select zero, press enter. Now select the first line, second line, and there we are. So these are two special use cases of fillet tool as well. Okay, so adding zero radius fillet and adding fillet between parallel lines is the first tip. Now let's explore all the remaining seven AutoCAD tips that will make you look like a pro. Now I have two of my favorite tips in this list that I'd recommend that you start using right now. So watch this video till the end to learn about these two tips. Okay, so here is the second tip. If you want to add symbol in AutoCAD, it's pretty easy. For example, you can go to multi-line text, start a text box, and here you can simply type simple text. And if you want to add a symbol, you can go to the symbol option, select the one from this list, or if it is not available here, go to other and select a symbol from this character map. But what about symbols of geometric dimensioning and tolerancing? Well, they are not usually available in this list. So if you want to add GDNT symbols, then go to this list and select GDT font. So just type G, that's going to take you to this. And here we have GDT font, just select it. And now we have all the geometric dimensioning and tolerancing symbol. For example, we have the run out, the symmetry, the position tolerance, the total run out and all these things. So maybe let's say you want to add this run out symbol, select it, click on select, copy, and then go to here, right click and paste. And we have the run out symbol. If you want to add another one, just go to character map and add any symbol. So that's how you can add GDNT symbols in AutoCAD. Click OK and done. Now, before we move any further, I want to share with you my AutoCAD beginners course. Now, this is the most comprehensive course that will help you learn AutoCAD right from scratch up to a professional level. Now, this course is part of SourceCAD subscription. So this subscription will give you access to not only this course, but also all the other courses of SourceCAD, including courses of other topics like Fusion 360, SolidWorks, SketchUp, Civil 3D, and a lot more with Q&A support from instructor and live weekly sessions. Now check the course link here at the top or also in the description and start learning right now. So this next step is about adding logos in 3D objects. So here I have 3D object, I'll switch. 3D modeling workspace, which I am in. So if you are not in 3D modeling workspace, just switch to 3D modeling. Then go to visualize tab. And currently we are in shades of gray visual style. Change that to realistic. Now go to material browser, select this global material, right click and duplicate. Now give it a name. So I'll call it logo and enter. Now click this edit option, select the image box and select your logo. In this case, I'm selecting this source CAD icon click open. Now double click this logo and change a few parameters here. Now by default, I just know that the size of image is really large. And when I apply it, it's not going to look normal. So I'll change the sample size to four for height and width. Also here in the tiled pattern, it's well tiled. I'll select no for horizontal and vertical side. Close it, close it. We are done. Now drag it and drop it here. And the logo is added, which doesn't look right but we'll fix it. Now to fix it, go to material mapping and select box, select this, enter. And now using this box, you can kind of fix its location, size and everything about this logo. So I'll just move it like this and I'll make it like so here. All right. Now let's just move it slightly back here. And after a bit of trial and error, you will get the logo that you need. So here we are, I'll just move it way outside. And there we are, it is almost perfect. So with that, we have the logo that we needed here. So that's how you can add the logo. Now you can use the similar method to add the logo here as well. So you can drag it, drop it. Once again, go to material mapping. And here also I'll select box mapping and 
For these kind of situations, it's better to use the box mapping because that is the one which will give you the flexibility you need for changing this logo. So here we are and I'll move it back and right here. Okay. It looks like I'm pretty much done. Now, if you want to maybe change it even further, then you can do that as well. Now, these lines are because of the edges of my image. So if you don't want these lines, make sure your image is clean and it has no boundary or other thing in it. So it, you'll get a completely clean logo. All right, now let's talk about finding commands. And actually in AutoCAD, there is a really good inbuilt search feature. So if you go to this logo here at the top left corner and click on it, you're going to see this. Now this search feature is really good and you can kind of use it like Google search. Now, as an example, let's assume that I want to find out the command which will remove all the overlapping objects. For that, all I need to do is type the thing that this command can do. So uh, delete overlapping objects and that's about it. I mean, I haven't yet finished it and now it will show the result. So this is the command that will delete overlapping objects. Not only that, you can now click here and the command will start. The command is called overkill and here we are. In a similar way, if you want to find out other command, for example, a command for pattern or maybe this is not the right one. So circular pattern. All right, here we are. Now you can see that we have the command here, which is array. So if you want to make the circular pattern, you need to select this polar array or this one. So any of these commands are just fine. You can select it from here. So that's how you can use command search feature. All right, here is the next tip. Now, if you select any object in AutoCAD, it just selects it. But now if you select one more object, it will select that as well. So basically the previous object and the new one is added to the selection set. If I click on more objects or maybe if I make a window, then all those objects are added to my selection set. Now that's the default behavior. But what if in your case, this is happening. If you select an object, well, that is selected. But as soon as you select the second object, the first one is deselecting automatically. In that case, you need to fix a system variable or maybe let's say you don't want this kind of behavior and you want to select object one by one manually by using shift key. In that case, type pick add P I C K A D D press enter and the default value is two. So change it to zero enter. And now if I click on one object, well, that's selected. But as soon as I click on the second one, it will deselect the previous one. If you now want to select multiple objects, you need to press and hold shift. And now it will select multiple objects. So if you want AutoCAD to work like this, well, you can use this option, but I don't want it like that. So I'll simply type pick add press enter and I'll change this value to two enter. And now we are back to the default behavior. All right. Now the next tip. So if you want to select anything in AutoCAD, you can just click at a point, let go your cursor, move it, and now you'll get this box. But if you click at a point and don't let go your cursor, just click and hold your cursor. Now move your mouse, you'll get this kind of free hand selection that's called lasso selection. Now for some people, this may be a little bit annoying. And if you want to just remove this lasso selection completely, then right click anywhere in the drawing area, go to options, select this option, selection tab, and uncheck this, allow press and drag for lasso. Click OK and done. Now, even if you click and hold your cursor, you'll still get this box. It doesn't matter how you try that. Click let go, you have the box. Click and hold, you still have the box. So it's completely up to you. I prefer to keep it on, so I'll right click, I'll go to options, and here I'll check this option. Allow press and drag for lasso and done. We're back to normal. Okay, now this next tip is about cleaning our drawing. And no, I'm not talking about the purge command here. It's something completely different. Now let's look at this drawing here. I have, well, two lines. They are collinear, but they should have been one line. It will make more sense, of course. Here also I have two lines again. This is gonna make more sense if I have just one. Not only that, here I have two broken lines. And even if I move this line, there is another one right underneath it. So there are few overlapping objects as well. I'll press Control Z. So that's the kind of drawing which we have. Now, if you try fixing it manually, it's going to take some time and you won't be able to fix everything. There will be some gaps that you might miss. So to fix it, you can use the command overkill. So O-V-E-R-K-I-L-L. -L. Press enter and now select the object which you want to fix. So I'll just select it all entirely. Press enter and with the default options selected, simply click OK and done. 
now the drawing is fixed so if i go to this one look at this we now have single line here also single line if i go to this one now it looks like i still have one extra line here but again if you try it one more time it will fix that as well but i'll just delete it okay now do we have anything else no it still fixed it so now we have just one single line that one is gone and just merged it into one so that's how it's going to fix your drawing by merging separate collinear lines into one polyline and overlapping objects will be deleted okay this next tip is quite interesting now let's for a moment assume that we have these two drawings and right in between this point and this we want to add a circle usually the workflow looks like this we add a line and then we go to circle we use this midpoint to add the circle and then we delete the line so that's the usual workflow but let's not do that let's do it using a completely different method so here i'll directly go to the circle command now i'll press and hold my shift key and then right click okay and we have an option called mid between two points select it now click this first point click the second point and automatically it will snap to the midpoint of those two selected points just click and we have the circle we no longer need to make that construction line okay now let's talk about this next tip which is again very interesting now for a moment let's assume that we want to select all of these doors here in our drawing so usually what will you do well you'll select it one by one right well not necessarily you can just select one copy then right click and go to this option select similar and that's going to select all the similar doors that's it very quick well let's try one more thing maybe i'll just select this wall line of this wall then right click select similar and all of these walls are selected so this is a quick method of making selection and this will work for other object types like blocks dimension text and so on even in this case we have some blocks like attributed blocks so i'll select this block right click select similar and there we are all the blocks containing the attributes are selected so you can use this method to speed up your drawing process now here is our next tip it is related to 3d drawing so i'll obviously switch to 3d modeling all right and right here we have this simple part now if you want to extrude this face then well obviously in this case extrude it will not work because we need 2d sketch and we don't have it so i'll go to press pull and i'll select this face and i'll extrude it okay it's extruding it like this okay what if we want to extrude it along the taper direction in that case you can go to this press pull tool now press and hold your control key and then click on this face and this will happen so now it will extrude but only along the taper direction so this one is a quick method of extruding along the direction of your drawing face okay this one is kind of my favorite tip and it's about creating automated macros or basically you can just perform series of steps autocad will record it and whenever required you can play it back again let me show you how it works so in this case i'll go to manage tab and right here we have a thing called action recorder just activate this now when the action recorder is activated on your cursor you'll see this red dot which means everything every action is recorded this doesn't mean your screen is recorded it's just recording the actions that you'll perform on the command line so here i'll start with polygon command so p o l and enter the polygon command has started now i'll type 5 as number of sides all right for center i'll just click here anywhere is just fine all right now i'll click on inscribed okay and then radius of circle so radius maybe i'll just make it one and enter done now let's repeat one more command but before i do that just look at this it is recording all the commands so five sides here is the center inscribed radius one now if i type c and enter it has recorded the next command which is circle now i'll go to the same center now to go to the same center i have already activated geometric center here so just make sure geometric center is activated and that will let you select the center here select the center and now i'll add a 0.5 radii here so 0.5 enter done so this is kind of like a nut that we created here now i'm pretty much done so once you are finished click on stop and now a new macro is added let's give it a name so i'll call it custom nut all right click ok and now oh i just cannot add a space character here so let's just make it dash and ok we have added this custom nut macro now you can make some modifications here so the first modification that i'm going to do is this i'll change the number of sides of this polygon from 5 
to our own value and to do that I'll right click here and I'll select pause for user input. Now every time I run this macro AutoCAD will pause for my input right here. I'll also pause it here. So I'll right click here at the center right click pause for user input. That's it. So now it will pause for my input only on these two instances and it will automatically create everything else. Okay, let's see how it will work. So I'll just uncheck this option, this push pin. All right, custom nut is selected. Simply click on play. And now look at this. On this command line, we have enter number of sides. Okay, let's type six. Enter. Now the next prompt is specify center of polygon. Okay, let's just add it here and done. That's it. So now it will automatically create the polygon inscribed, the radius of circle and everything is not required. You just need to add two prompts. Let's try it again. Play number of sides. Let's make it seven this time. Center, maybe I'll just put it here and done. So using this kind of automation, you can really fast track your drawing process. All right, now this last one is also interesting. And using this, you can add new command aliases or you can modify the existing ones. Let me show you how it works. So again, I'll keep myself on this manage tab and here we have edit aliases option. Just click on this and select edit aliases option. All right, now this a simple kind of notepad file. This just looks like a simple notepad, but right here, if you scroll down, you'll see that we have aliases and the command name you can basically change the command alias of any command. For example, maybe let's change the command for circle and you can actually do that. So you know that circle command can be started with this C alias. C is for circle. Let's make it something else. I don't want to start it with C and rather I want to start it with Q. So I'll just type Q, file, save, done. Now restart AutoCAD. So close it and start it again click on new and here let's just type Q enter and the circle command has started. Okay, let's type C now C enter and C is now an unknown command. So basically that's how it works. Of course, I don't want to do that because that is definitely going to confuse me as well. So I'll just change it back to C. So here it is Q. I'll change it to C file and save. Now it's needless to say that this should be edited carefully because if you make changes here that's going to change the default aliases and if you forget to change it back again to default values then the only option is resetting AutoCAD completely which you can do that but of course not always recommended. So that was my list of favorite AutoCAD tips. Now, which one did you find most useful? Let me know in the comments down below. And if you want to learn AutoCAD right from scratch, then check the AutoCAD course library of SourceCAD using the link in the description. I'll see you soon in another video. Take care.